Across the American West, there simply isn't enough water to go around, and the full heat of summer is just getting started. From the Rio Grande to the Rocky Mountains, a mega drought is underway. It's shaping up to be the worst water crisis in generations. The darker the red, the worse it is. Reservoirs that store water for millions are below normal and are projected to hit historic lows soon. Venturing to remote mountain villages in Guatemala to find out what's driving children to leave their homes and make the dangerous journey to the United States all alone. Shep, there are so many complex reasons why people leave Central America. There is systemic corruption, widespread crime, crops that continue to fail blamed on climate change. But when you get right down to it, the reason some people leave is simple. What would you ask for from the Vice President of the United States visiting here? Alimentación. Wow, food. Why would you ask for food? Porque en vez de la, la gente de Honduras no tiene. Because the people in Honduras don't have enough food. Hunger that farmers here have been unable to grow their way out of because of what happened last year. We had last year something crazy, something that we didn't see, uh, we never saw before, which was two storms within two weeks. And it hit the same places. So some places were flooded from the first storm, and then they were hit in two weeks by the second storm. That's something that we had never seen before. Shep, experts say if Vice President Kamala Harris is going to solve the crisis here, First, the U.S. needs to recognize this problem is decades old. It's estimated one of every six people born in Guatemala now lives in the United States. So it's been a really, uh, really delicate rescue, very lucky. Um, we tried to rescue a helicopter earlier. They couldn't get through uh, because of the weather. Um, so it's just been a really good outcome for everybody and, and well done to the top of crew. The National Drought Mitigation Center has Milwaukee County and the D2 range, which is a severe drought. The National Weather Service says that if the drought continues through July, we could start to see some water restrictions to help conserve, and that includes maybe not watering your lawn as much and taking some shorter showers. Right now, farmers are some of the people most impacted by the little rain. According to an official with the National Weather Service, irrigation equipment is expensive and so many farmers go without it and are especially reliant on Mother Nature. And this month could be one of the worst when it comes to rainfall, although storms this week are expected to help some. West Michigan is currently in a drought and the temps these next few days are not going to help. Yeah, expected to be in the 90s, so the DNR has temporarily stopped doing prescribed burns and they're hoping others will do the same. Yeah, Derek and Doug, I'm out here in Greenville and I did get a chance to speak with the DNR just behind me past that stop sign and they were saying, you know what, this is where they typically do a burn site over here and it's 190 acres. I got a chance to tour it earlier with my photographer and it's pretty extensive back there, but you know what they're saying for now, they're going to stop. It's just too dangerous. We're under a moderate drought across southeast Michigan, a little sliver of west southwestern Michigan from Kalamazoo to Grand Rapids area. That's more of a severe drought, so we've had below average rain every month so far this year. So the average is the orange. So these orange bars, that's where the average is each month. So far this month, we've had just under an inch of rain for June. Um, the average is about three and a quarter, so still a ways to go. On the year, this is all at DTW, by the way. On the year, we are right around five inches of rain below average. Magic Reservoir in Blaine County is drying up. The reservoir catches melting snow from the sawtooth and supplies irrigation water to more than 36,000 acres of farmland across the Magic Valley. Farmer Steve Miller grows hay, barley, and wheat just outside of Fairfield. His crops are up, 
but he's oh. praying for rain. How long do you think you got water till if you were to pick I'm, a date? I'm guessing would be the 15th, maybe the 20th of June we'll be done there gating out here. It's just, it's a guess, you know, if we get if we get some of those spring showers up in the hills, why the, each time you get a little shower like that, why it gives you a few more days. Earlier this year, we asked you to help us provide two state-of-the-art solar pumps to bring water to water holes for thirsty elephants. The elephants live at the Addo National Park in South Africa, where a terrible drought is raging, the worst in 100 years. Thanks to your help, we were successful and managed to supply the elephants and other wildlife in one area of the park with a consistent water supply. Unfortunately, it's still not enough. We're back in South Africa's Addo Elephant National Park, where the worst drought in over 100 years is showing no sign of letting up. We repaired two boreholes a few months ago, which have provided relief to thousands of animals in one area of the park. So there we have it. Good, clean, fresh water, thanks to our supporters. But this area, as you can see, needs help. To make matters worse, Addo's rainy season is over and even drier months are expected until October. Lack of water has devastating consequences on elephants and their future generations. Just one elephant drinks 200 litres or over 50 gallons of water every day. The wildlife travels from all corners of the park to the water holes we secured and there's fierce competition to access the life-giving water. We need to urgently install more water points around the park to safeguard one of Africa's most precious elephant populations and thousands of other animals. Corcoran, California, home to some 20,000 people. It's known as the farming capital of the state. But the city, some 65 miles north of Bakersfield, now is known as the sinking capital of the state. Over the last 14 years, some parts of the city have sunk as much as 11 and a half feet. It's such a bizarre concept. You know, what do you mean the ground is sinking? Journalist Lois Henry is the founder of the independent nonprofit news site SJV Water. She spent more than a year reporting on the forces causing the land beneath Corcoran to sink. The Central Valley in general has been sinking for many years. The primary culprit? Agriculture. Sinking, also known as land subsidence, happens when farmers are unable to get enough surface water for their crops. So they're forced to pump out huge amounts of water from below the ground. When underground water reservoirs known as aquifers are depleted too much, the land sinks. And that's exactly what's happening in Corcoran, but at a rate unmatched in California. This whole giant area is, is sinking because of the groundwater pumping. But Corcoran's at the center. You know, I mean, if, if you had a heat map, it'd be the splotch of red or purple right in the middle. In fact, this map from the state of California shows just that. The Corcoran area, seen in red, sunk roughly five feet in just the last five years. The subsidence of the land surrounding Corcoran has happened at a glacial pace over the last several decades, nearly imperceptible to the naked eye. Perhaps the most obvious result of the subsidence? This levee I'm standing on. The levee sank seven feet and had to be built back up at a cost of $10 million to local taxpayers. Well, yeah, I didn't realize it was, it was sinking that fast. Fred Figueroa founded Lake Bottom Brewery and Distillery in downtown Town Corcoran a couple years ago. He worries about the impacts land subsidence could have on the local economy. It creates a problem somewhere down the line where uh, it affect our, you know, being able to have people come in or whatever. Damage to the city's infrastructure and flooding are also big concerns. The city of Sioux Center has issued a water watch for water customers. In a Facebook post, they are asking water customers to limit lawn irrigation and outdoor watering to two times per week and only between 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. They are also asking that people with even house numbers only water on even days and odd house numbers water only on odd numbered days. Well, massive amounts of rain in central Texas over the past few weeks got us out of a drought. It also made the jobs of some farmers much more difficult. Rebecca Hume owns Verdant Farm in Bastrop County and sells vegetables every week to families in central Texas. She says farmers welcome some rain, but this has made it much more tougher to harvest ripe vegetables and also get tractors into the field so they can plant new crops. Usually we already have ripe tomatoes by this time of year and they're all just kind of hanging on green right now. So it, again, it's just a little bit strange. I can't say it's all bad. We're all grateful for the water, but it's definitely made some aspects a lot more complicated. 
Hume says this has delayed business a bit and just needs a solid week of sunshine to get back on track. Lee out here in the pine and there are two houses here each have their own well on their own property but underneath here underground there is only one water basin so that means if this house uses a lot of water it will impact the other's water supply drought low snowpack and more homes means water supply is low in southern deschutes county some people are seeing their wells are drying up but they can't just drill deeper most property owners need to dig an entirely new well to hit more water. One the Pine woman had to have her well's pump replaced because she ran out of water. I started noticing a pressure change in the water first, and then it got to the point where it wouldn't work in a bathroom, and then it wouldn't work in the kitchen, and then suddenly mid-shower it just shut off completely. So then you're in your towel running next door trying to finish just a daily task. Some people have had to change the way they water their property. Diana Guin in Three Rivers says she's had to hand water her grass instead of using a sprinkler, which evaporates too fast. But hand watering has its challenges. I have to stand out here for like an hour and a half a day to hand water to get everything in there. And yeah, it's, it's an interruption, but you know, this is where we live. So this is what we have to do to be able to stay here. So the owner of Thompson Plum and Irrigation tells me that there can be several houses connected to one water supply and with dry conditions comes a higher demand for water. It's all a cycle and we're all connected. Um, and that's a key piece. Our snowpack was light. Um, and the 90 degree days aren't helping because it's melting things faster. Andy High says there are a few ways to help conserve water. Do dishes and irrigate at night, get a cistern which collects water, and see if your well needs the pump replaced. The continued rainfall has also spelled relief for the nation's reservoirs, which took in 170 million tons of water over the past week. The recent rainfall, coupled with our previous anti-drought measures, which included using groundwater, construction water, and underground stream, will provide sufficient water supply to the end of July, according to the calculations of the Water Resources Agency. The Water Resources Agency estimates that storage capacity at Fei Tsui Reservoir, which supplies Taipei and New Taipei, went from 70 to 81 percent over the weekend. Li Yutan, which supplies the central region, is now looking at 17 percent capacity, up from 13.3 percent last week. Miao Li was hit hard by the drought before the rain arrived, and now Mingde Reservoir has increased to 40 percent capacity, and Yonghe Shan Reservoir is at 13 percent capacity. Despite the intake, most reservoirs are still far from being replenished, and Minister Wang is asking the public to continue to conserve water. The hot temperatures and moderate drought have been causing forest fires in Puerto Rico. At least 50 municipalities are being part of a moderate drought in the southern part of the island, and this is causing forest fires. But can they actually be prevented? We talked to the National Weather Service to answer all of your questions. We reached the around 90, 95 degrees out there, right? Plus we have a, a, a glass or even a match around somebody smoking who also started fire. But glass in, in, in the middle of the field with such a high volume of, of, of fuel, um, this could help reach a higher uh, degrees and just start a fire in the middle of nowhere. Forest fires are complicated to prevent because of the fact that they are part of the natural environment. But there are things we can do to help minimize the risk. Try not to, to affect your, your area where you live, right? Um, during uh, the wet season, you know, you should uh, take care of your land around, uh, clean up your land, because when the, the dry season starts around uh, January, February, you know, extends to, to March and April, you, you don't want the, all that fuel be near your house. Also, bottles, you know, if you see a, a, a glass bottle on, on the roadway or in the, on your land, you know, just pick it up, because that, this is, could be a source uh, uh, in, in, to initiate the, the fire. The hot temperatures haven't been so helpful either. Puerto Rico has broken a couple of temperature records this past few months. In southern Saskatchewan, this is one of eight lakes that University of Regina researchers test and sample every two weeks. So you can see the oxygen is going to drop as you go down. 
testing that's been done for 28 years. Watching what happens to lakes over time. And the lakes are changing. Data from here and similar research in Ontario helped scientists analyze nearly 400 lakes in the Northern Hemisphere. Their findings, published in Nature Journal, show oxygen levels have fallen over four decades by about 5% at the surface and 19% in deep waters. So in the surface, you're losing oxygen because it's getting warmer. And in the bottom, you're losing oxygen both because it's getting warmer, but also because the lakes are getting greener through time. Greener because of an oversupply of nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus, often fueled by human sewage and farm fertilizer seeping into the lake. At its worst, it breeds toxic blooms of algae. In the Muskoka, Ontario region, volunteers are monitoring the algae. With climate change and the more hot, dry weather, lakes that never had a blue-green algae bloom in the past, they could experience them now. All right, there we go. Jason Mattity is a professional angler who captured this video of the potentially toxic blooms. It's just like, I, I can't even fish here because it's thick. And I certainly wouldn't eat the fish out of there and a lot of the older people say that they wouldn't do that as well. On Papikasis First Nation, Michelle Brass teaches traditional ways of hunting and gathering food. Decreasing oxygen in the lakes means there's less oxygen for fish to breathe. It really does damage the local food system that Indigenous peoples rely upon. Experts say it's possible to remedy the problem, but only if we control land use around lakes and slow climate change. Today's exciting video has been brought to you by Wolfie Terrier Productions 2021. Wooly! Wooly! Meow!